hey guys what's up welcome back to the channel in today's video we are going to learn how to create a cinematic title sequence inside davinci resolve so let's take a look at the preview and get started all right so the first thing that we'll do is go to the bottom right corner and click on this care icon to open up the composite shot properties I'm going to set the timeline frame rate to 30 and play back to 30 as well and click on save and then I'm going to make sure that the effects library is enabled and then go to effects and fusion comp I'm going to drag this onto the timeline so by default the duration of this comp this fusion clip is five seconds long so if you want to extend it you can do that by just dragging it I'm going to leave it at five seconds and then go inside the fusion tab to create our animation so I'm gonna right click in the flow and click on arrange tools and set this to grid I'm gonna move the media out to the right and the first thing that we will do is create our background so for that we will need to add a background node and to see this background in a viewer you can just drag this node in any one of your viewers I'm gonna drag this into view one and now I'm going to switch to single view by clicking on this icon right over here that says single viewer click on that and I'm going to make some room over here so like that now in the background node I'm going to set the type to gradient and I'm going to set the gradient type to radial and the start x I'm going to set this to 0.5 so it's at the center and the first color the first color of the gradient which is at the center I'm going to change that color so I can just click on this triangle icon to make sure it's selected and then click on this black color and I'm going to make it a bit of a lighter shade of black and click on OK and on the second color I'm going to click on the second stop right here the triangle and click on the color again and I'm going to set this to black and then click on OK and now we'll add some grain to this so I'm going to hit shift space bar on the keyboard and search for grain and we have film grain and we also have the simple grain as well so you can use either one of these and it will work perfectly fine so let's just try film grain and click on add and to view this again drag this onto the viewer so that you can see the grain and you can just play around with this so maybe increase the size a bit and strength you can play around with that and I think that it looks pretty okay okay so the next step is to add fast noise so you don't have to click on any node just hit shift spacebar and search for fast noise and add it to your flow and once you do that you can just view this by dragging it onto the viewer and in the fast noise I'm going to change the detail amount I'm going to set this to around uh, 6.5 um, you can just play around with the values I'm going to change the contrast I'm going to make it 3.5 and then maybe I'm going to decrease the brightness and the scale amount I uh, will just set that to around 1.8 not one point let's do one point I guess 1.10 yeah 1.1 should be fine and you can play with the angle let's just make sure it's somewhere looking like that and the seat uh, this can we can just increase this a bit we don't have to increase it too much so I guess 0 0.50 or 0 0.60 and then seat rate just increase this a little bit I guess 0 0.30 should be fine right so now we have our fast noise we want to add a polygon mask to this so click on this icon that says polygon and we'll add a polygon mask and now this tool is selected and you can create your mask so I'm going to click and create a shape like this and just close this path I'm going to click on this point and then I'm going to click on this icon and it will make this uh, selected point smooth I'm going to click on that I'm going to do the same thing with this point as well make it smooth and you can just play around with the shape over here so you can make it however you want okay so that looks good 
and then in the polygon what you have to do is make sure that the soft edge is set to the maximum value then the next step is to create a background node I'm going to add a background node by just simply dragging it I'm going to this background node is black so no changes I'm going to connect it with this fast noise and the reason is because if we view the fast noise so you can see that we have this transparent area we don't want that so if we connect the background with this fast noise and view this merge and we have to switch these two so the background right now is set as the foreground we want the background this background node to be as a background and this fast noise as the foreground so you can click on this node the merge node and hit ctrl t on your keyboard and you will switch the foreground with the background and now we have filled the transparent area with the black color okay so what you have to do is on this node make sure that the apply mode is set to hard light you can play around with different modes as well and i'm going to decrease the gain amount a bit so let's just maybe set this to 0 0.9 and blend i'm going to decrease that as well so maybe around 0.5 i'm also going to hold the alt key on the keyboard and click on this line the pipeline i'm going to add a router so i can just you know be organized with my node structure right so the next step is to connect the film grain and the background with this merge so i can just drag this output and connect it with the merge and this will result in another merge node again i'm going to create a router alt and click on this line and it will create it something like that so if we build this merge node you can just drag this onto the screen and this merge node i'm going to set the apply mode to screen so that we can see it properly so make sure that the background and the film grain uh, this pipe is coming into this merge node as a foreground and all these nodes are coming into this merge node as a background and once you do that then you should be all set so if you play this animation this is how it is going to look right so i'm done with my background i'm going to select all these nodes and hit ctrl g on the keyboard to group it now i'm going to rename this group to bg for background just move it over here now we'll start adding our text so grab the text plus node and to view this just drag this onto the viewer and just type in your text so i'm going to type in cinematic and the font is open sans you can just choose any font that you want i'm going to change the font weight to light and i'm going to maybe increase the size a bit now we can also increase the tracking but we'll do that at the end okay the next step is to add a follower modifier so you can right click in this text box and click on follower and now you'll see that your modifiers tab will be enabled so you can click on that and here we can change some settings so i'm going to increase the delay amount i'm going to set that to two and rest of the settings should be fine you can just go into the shading tab and here we, we can animate all these different properties so the one that we will animate the first one that will animate is the softness so we can go to group properties scroll down and you'll see softness over here so just click on that to expand it and just make sure that your playhead is at the first frame so right now this red indicator is your playhead so i'm going to move this back to the very first frame and now i can just increase the softness i'm going to set this to maximum value it's x and y i'm going to create keyframes on this and i'm going to set actually set that to 40. okay so let's just set that to 40 and now i'm going to move 30 frames forward and set this back to zero all right so if you play this animation this is how it is going to look the next thing that we're going to animate is the position so expand that and we have the offset x y so we'll create a keyframe just make sure that your playhead is at the very first frame i'm going to create keyframe on offset x and y by clicking on this diamond icon and now it will take you to the it will add a path one so we don't have to do anything here so just double click on the follower one and just again scroll down till you find the offset x and y 
and I'm going to animate this so make sure your playhead is at the first frame I'm going to move the offset Y so you can do it with the offset X as well I'm going to do this with offset Y so I'm going to increase this well actually I'm going to type in one over here and then uh, at 30 frames move your player to 30 frame and I'm going to set this back to set this back to zero let's play this animation okay so we can make this animation even better by going into the spline and I'm going to increase the size of this window and I'm going to select the displacement keyframe and then I'm going to click on this icon that says zoom to fit and now click on this icon that says select all and then click on this icon that says smooth and then I'm going to hit the T key on the keyboard and we have here we have the ease in and ease out values so I'm going to increase the ease in value to the maximum value which is 100 and I'm going to exit out this spline and play this animation one more time next thing that you will animate is the opacity so make sure your player is at the first frame click on the opacity keyframe at the first frame we want the opacity to be at zero go to 30th frame and increase the opacity back to 100 so I think that's it for this text uh, one more thing that we can do is we can go back to our text element so go to tools at the top see we are in the modifiers we have to go back to the tools and here we can animate the tracking as well so make sure your player is at the first frame create a keyframe on tracking go to 30th frame and increase the tracking amount okay so I would also like to add some scale animation to this so select this node hit shift spacebar and add a transform node and click on add and we can just drag this node to the viewer and I'm going to add the first frame make sure player is again at the first frame set the keyframe on size go to 30th frame or let's just go to the end of the animation and just increase this keep on increasing it so something like that I'm going to do the same thing with the tracking as well so I'll just remove this keyframe over here so you can just remove it and we can go to the end and increase the tracking amount so let's play this animation All right pretty sweet okay so we are done with our text I'm going to group this Control G and I'm going to call this text alright so next step is to create some particles so for that we will need to use the particle emitter node so just drag this and the particle you won't be able to see the particle so if you drag this onto the viewer you won't be able to see it to see the particles you will need to use the P render node so search for P render and edit and yeah so now we can drag the p render and see the particles inside the viewer but um, we need to add some more nodes inside p emitter so make sure you click on the p emitter node to select it hit shift spacebar on the keyboard and the first node that you're going to add is p direction force so p direction force added uh, now select this node which is already selected hit shift spacebar again and the next node is p turbulence click on add again shift spacebar and this time we'll add p friction so once you add that and now we can just make some adjustments to all these all these nodes so in the first node though, which is p emitter let's click on that to select it and now on the right side we have some settings over here so let's just change the number amount so i'm going to set this to around uh, 0. 6 or 0 0.7 you can play around with that variance I'm going to set this to around 1.5 lifespan well this frame rate this timeline or this animation is 150 frames long so I don't think uh, we'll need anything longer than that so I'm going to set this to that value and lifespan variance well uh, we don't want to change that but you can play around with that value as well and then we'll go to velocity and we can set this to around 0 0.7 don't have to change that too much but obviously you can play with all these settings and uh, come up with a different animation now the next step is to go inside the style tab 
click on that and style i'm going to set this to blob now let's change some color so go to color control or you can just set the particles to any color that you want so i'm going to set this to white so i don't want to change it right now but maybe at a later point you can change if you want to change the color of the particles you can do that inside inside this tab right here the next thing we're going to change is size controls so the size i'm going to set this to around 0 0.02 and size variance yes um, 0 0.01 should be good enough and then we have the size over life we can drag this down like that and this one we can just create a curve like this now we can also control the fade so we want the particles to fade in so let's just uh, set that to 0 0.09 and we can also set the fade out value as well okay so in the next tab is the region i'm going to set the region to cube i'm going to set the width so i'm going to change that to around 0 0.3 and height to 0 0.1 and the depth i'm going to set this to around 5 0 0.5 okay and let's change the y offset as well so i'm going to set this to let's just leave it as it is and we'll see if we want to change make some changes to this y offset as well okay so now let's go to the next node which is the directional force and in this one i'm going to set the strength to the maximum value and the direction to 90 right now if we set the direction to negative 90 the particles will flow in the downward direction which we don't want so we can see the particles are going down which we don't want so if we change this to 90 they're going to go up all right so the next thing is the direction z i'm going to set this to 90 as well okay so let's go to p turbulence and in this node we're going to set the x strength well the maximum value is one but you can change that to any other value so i'm going to set this to four y strength we don't want to change that or let's just um, set this to one and z strength we can set that to four as well okay so now your particles will flow all over the screen and now let's go to p friction let's just uh, leave it as it is and we have the p render over here so right now the particles are in a 3d space so we want to make them 2d since our animation is 2d as well so we can hit shift spacebar and search for renderer 3d and edit and now this will turn your 3d particles into 2d okay so we can view this so here are our particles Okay, so the particles are generating from the center which we don't want so we can go back to pay emitter and change the y offset so let's just bring this down like that and just play this okay so that is looking good but as you can see the particles are generating from one point over here so we can go to p emitter again and increase the width amount okay and now let's check it out so now we can see that they are not generating from the from just one point so we can increase that to two to increase the point of origin of these particles all right so pretty sweet so we can now select all these nodes hit ctrl g to group them and we can call these particles and click on ok so i'm going to first uh, connect the text group with the background this will result in this merge node i'm going to hold the alt key on the keyboard and click on it and just create a router and now we can select this merge node and just make sure that the text which is coming into this merge is set as foreground and the background node group is set to as background which it already is now we can connect the particles with this merge node and this will result in this merge node so let's just drag it over here again alt and click on this 
and the particles should be coming in as foreground which it is and then this is the background so if we take a look at this merge node let's see this will be our final animation okay let's play this animation pretty sweet right so now the last step is so you can just connect the merge with the media out and that should be it you can now go to your edit page or have your animation already so what you can do is you can create copies of your fusion comp alt hold the alt key on the keyboard and just drag this to create a duplicate and on the second clip the fusion clip you can go inside the fusion tab and you can go to the text group you can just double click on that select the text node double click over here and you can change it change the text to something else so let's just type in title and let's go back to the edit page and you'll see that we have the same animation on a different text and you can even change the colors go to fusion tab select the text i'm going to change it to um different color maybe this one i'm going to copy this Control c to copy it and let's just view this and we can also change the party color of the particles by going into the p emitter double click again and go to style and here we can change the color controls right um, and if you want to change the color of the noise you can do that as well let's just close out of this open up the background and we have the fast noise over here uh, let's just uh, we have the color over here i can change it to any color that i want so i think that wraps up this tutorial that's how we can create this cinematic title sequence inside davinci resolve so thank you so much for watching if this video is helpful don't forget to leave a like and also subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys in the next one.